Hello everyone, this is Colin on the AASC Elite channel, and here we are for the Copyright Amateur Series Race 6 here at Talladega. We are now past a third of the way through the season. Um, we just passed a third of the way through the season in the Pro Series, and we are almost to halfway in this series, so the Copyright Amateur Series rocking along. Here are the point standings after five races. Logan Sanders with two wins on top of the board. However, Nia Dever, Jack Corkins, August Eberhardt, and Davey Johnson bearing down. It's a five-way battle currently for the top five. However, if you're outside that top five, you want to get in. Now is where you got to start making some progress. On the front row, Ryan Dunn making the start for Blue Flare Motorsports. And Jack Corkins. Row two, Dan Klenick and August Eberhardt winner in Daytona earlier in the year. Row three, Chloe Baker and Davey Johnson for JVS. Row four, Megan Johnson and Garrett Sinor. Row 5, Cole Baker driving in Avalon Motorsports number 5 this week, and Nia Deverett currently second in points. Row 6, Moretta Restrichel and Conrad Cooper for BK Racing. Row 7, Nick Vequez and Webster Zygar driving his own team. Row 8, Eric Willis driving the Red Viper, Red Viper Racing entry, and Haley Wish driving the Davidson Motorsports entry. Row 9, Zach Rain and Tyler Selspin in the 88. Row 10, Castle Radcliffe and Andre Popov, both racing for the championship. Row 11, Logan Sanders, your points leader, and Jake Baskinger. Row 12, Jeremy Jones making his debut in the Carbon Amherst Series, and Patrick Curtis in the 21. Row 13, Callum Wood, I believe making his first start in the Carbon Amherst Series, and Brian Thompson. Row 14, Giovanni Barraza and Aiden Thomas. Row 15, Samantha Jones and Kieran Pangborn making a great start for Jones Motorsports, as well as Ryder Smith and Dylan Membrilla for YouTube Gamer Motorsports in row 16. That rounds out your field, and now here we go, get set, green flag is in the air, we are racing here at Talladega. As they come off a of turn two, you see Ryan Dunn managing to hold the lead, at least a little bit over Dan Klenick. However, there is a force behind him. Look at Garrett Sonor up the middle in the 37. He will drop to the inside line. And currently, it looks like a two car breakaway just a little bit as Chloe Baker not catching up to the back of Dan Klenick. But as they round out of turn four, we will be completing lap one out of 29. And we expect to have two pit stops in this race, and we're not, we're not sure, but it's probably going to be around the 10 and 20 lap mark. However, obviously, cautions can play a part in that on when those lap times count come when they um, when the green flag pit stops happen. As we see, Ryan Dunn still sitting out in front here. Um, Dunn was fairly confident with his car and racing against all the rookies. The Copyright Amateur Series, he thought he could have a really good shot at winning this race, and he definitely showed it by qualifying on the pole. However, he hasn't had too, too terribly a lot of success in the series so far. He's kind of been a top five car most of the time, but mostly outside. Ryan Dunn looking for a strong performance here to help him in terms of Pro Series race. Later this week, as we see, though Ryan Dunn is going to get easily pushed up to the outside, it is that pack formation that we always see at the Super Speedways. We see Megan Johnson also one of the drivers to get underneath Ryan Dunn. Red Zischel making her way out to the front of the field, and Logan Sanders, your points leader, started deep in the field. He's already made his way up to the front in only three laps. That's just, and that's not just skill, that's just showing how the pack works and how the air managed to define the drivers in the field. Now, this is not what we like to see here. We see some four wide racing back here in the in the field here, and that's not really what you want to see at Talladega. And there you go, there is a caution out on the track. Multiple cars sliding down towards the infield, towards pit road. It does not appear to be a big incident. However, I definitely saw a couple cars involved as we take the caution flag, that will fly on lap 4. And it looks like a lot of cars make it through, but which ones didn't? We're looking at Ryan Dunn here. Could he be a part of it? It looks like it's 
yeah, Chloe Baker just got very squirrely coming through turns three and four, and um, just washed right up into Ryan Dunn, and there goes Ryan Dunn's hopes of having a good shot at winning this race, as now he has some back end damage. Here's Patrick Curtis, let's see what he saw. Yeah, Chloe Baker didn't hold her line that well, and really, there's nothing to do. When you're in four wide, a four-wide situation, you have to have good car control because just one little movement, you can create something like that. Thankfully, it wasn't any bigger, though, and you see us getting back. Green flag racing. Um, there was only one DNQ, and that was Dylan Membrilla, who I believe hit Patrick Curtis, although I'm not entirely sure about that. However, he has to put his car behind the wall. But that is the only car out of the race at this moment as we continue on at Talladega lap 7 out of 29. Moretta also under attack though at the front. The number 2 car, he's been kind of sleepy, but Andrei Popov, only 39 markers outside the front spot in that number 2 car. For Team Zygar, the team wasn't expected to be a, a, like a massive contender. Um, obviously a team started by a driver, not one of the most expected to do well when you come across Goliaths like Mally Motorsports and Red Stallion Racing, as well as Double Team Motorsports, I guess you can call now. But currently, they've really been holding their own in this chase so far, as well as BK Racing with Conrad Cooper, just a position behind them in the points in eighth. And here is that BK Racing driver right now on the screen, the 27 car, um, the Austin Chevrolet. The 27 has been... Well, he's, he actually was expected to do a, um, a little better than he is now, just because he is one of the few drivers in the chase that are actually not a rookie. Um, Conrad Cooper was a driver back in Season 1, however, he never made his debut in Season 2, and he was shoved back down to the car in the series. Although, he did have a pretty good shot on um, ride when he was at um, Alonzo Cabot Racing back in Season 1. Riding aboard August Eberhard, fourth in points, and August is a special driver when it comes to super speedways because August will forever be known as the first driver to win in the Comrade Energy Series, but also on a super speedway. And we see him doing very excellent right now as the 14 car currently running up towards the front, managed to dodge that first accident, and currently is having a solid day. I believe that is that's the 29 on the inside, and there's a caution. August Eberhard turned in the wall and the 38 at Castle Radcliffe rides the safer barrier. Eberhard is going to get away. In the rear view mirror, I didn't see many cars. Eric Willis is going to have problems. And one of the Penzoil Pro Series drivers making the double duty here this weekend. He's going to be involved. Here is a replay and oh, who hooked him? Someone definitely hooked him and it looks like Callum Wood is going to end up rolling his car. Ooh, and Cole Baker is going to take a huge hit. A lot of part-time drivers involved in this one, and I believe that's going to be Brian Thompson and Callum Wood. They, they tried to go almost five wide there, and obviously that would not work. Jack Porkins is going to be involved as well. Patrick Curtis again involved in a wreck, and this isn't what this isn't at the magnitude that we saw at Daytona, but definitely that took out a few cars. And we're going to see here, as we are halfway through the race, the first 21 are shown on your screen, so we do not have more than 21 cars out of the race. I believe we ha are at 8, 8 or 9, because we have 22 cars left to run in the race. However, Haley Wish we see out front. Um, we had some fuel strategy under the break. Some drivers, curiously enough, did not come down for fuel, so we're going to... I believe they're going to try to short pit this one out and maybe come down in about two or three laps. Maybe try to make it to the end. Ooh, H Haley Wish is very slow. I might have just been. S I might have just jinxed it. Is Haley Wish out of gas? Uh oh, and spotter communication. I believe Haley Wish is out of gas. So that is devastating for her because now she is out of gas and running down the back stretch. And we're going to see some more cars going down. That is a smart call by Nia Deverett. Um, we saw it with Haley Wish. It looked like there was some sort of problem. Logan Sanders also coming down. That's a smart strategy. And that was right. They're, they are running out of gas. So people, you see Megan Johnson running down, running out of gas down the backstretch. Did not commit to pit road that time by. And that was a super smart strategy for the drivers like the 51, the 83, the 20. Because they managed to get to pit road and they're like, you know what, we're not going to risk it. 
I don't know what happened, but I guess, like, all the drivers that tried the strategy, it looks like they just came up, like, two laps short or something, because people were running out in the backstretch just after the restart, and that was not expected to happen. So, a huge turn in the, in the race here, as we only have a few cars left, I believe around 10 cars left, in this front group. Obviously, Nick Vaquez and Conrad Cooper have gotten the best of it, as they are trying to pull away from the rest of the field, but as you know, at Talladega, um, the draft does not work in single cars' um, favor. As Oh no, and another Team Zygarde car with problems, Webster Zygarde in the 12 car, is going to have an engine expire on it. And that's a shame. As we see, we see, actually see some more of the leaders coming down. Now this is a short pit for them, but you know what? I believe they are trying to rig their calculations about two laps earlier than, ever, than, their, than their previous calculations just because everyone was running out of gas. Not a bad strategy. However, Jeremy Jones obviously didn't want that. He actually stayed out two laps later and managed to lead the race and get a few bonus points, and he didn't run out of gas, so I'm not sure what exactly happened with some of the drivers running out of gas, like Haley Wish, Megan Johnson, and some of the other drivers that ran out of gas on that restart, but that was pretty, that was, I'm, I'm pretty shocked that something, like an error like that could have slipped by these crew chiefs. Um, but we see Jeremy Jones coming out, he will, I believe he will be able to merge up within the field, now we see Garrett Sonor is out in front. The 37 car currently taking the lead. However, the 20 car is trying to challenge for it. And we see um, the 51 car does come down pit road. You saw Nia Deverett in that group right there. Come de came down pit road and now expected the 20 car will come down a lap after her. And here he comes. So Dan Klenek. As you look at the lap count with four laps to go, he will not be able to make it to the end. And we are believing that these drivers will be able to make it to the end. The guys that pit two laps early, they are still safe. So we don't need to worry about a fuel strategy race. However, as we see, we have about a five-car battle here coming back to the line. Zach Rain, Nick Vaquez, Conrad Cooper, Garrett Sinor, and Jeremy Jones making his Copyright Amherst Series debut. We have two laps to decide it. That car in front of him, was that the 83? I believe that might have been Logan Sanders. So, not going to be the best points day after all for the 83 car, but if you look at his competition, Nia Deverett pitting the same strategy as him. Jack Porkins is out. August Eberhard has lost this draft. Um, probably will not going to do one of the best. Um, actually was involved in that wreck, so won't even be a contender at all, really. And Davey Johnson was also involved in the wreck. So the top five that were contenders, really all of them have had problems today. So not going to be a huge deficit for the 83 car. However, back at the front of the field, Zach Rain has, a, has come forward with the lead. Garrett Sonor is going to push him as we come to the final lap. And usually being out front is not where you want to be. However, Zach Rain is going to do everything he can to make that the best spot because once you're crossing the finish line it does end up being the best spot believe it or not and 37 behind him he will he make his move now or later Garrett Sonor this is the exactly the run he needs to get back in the points hunt he is 38 points out and is the first driver outside that top five group that had a really good um a view of the leader however Garrett Sonor with everyone's misfortunes this could pull him right back into that chase battle as well as Conrad Cooper behind him, but we're going to have to see how this all plays out. Cooper, could he give a bump to the 37 car? He's not. He's going to jump out behind the 37, and that should seal the fate of Zach Rain. And coming across the trioval, the battle for second is on, but Zach Rain will emerge victorious at Talladega. Nick Vaquez tried to make a move on the, f on the top two. But he will not succeed. He will finish fourth. Conrad Cooper ends up stealing second away from Garrett Sonor. And I'm not sure if Sonor would be happy about that as he might have had a shot at the win. But nevertheless, Zach Rain is doing burnouts in that number nine car. For DBK Motorsports, will go to victory lane for the first time this season. Cooper will finish second. Strong run for him. Baker, Jones, you see back there from rounding up the top six. And now here are the drivers starting. Um, you see Andre Popov and Webster Zygarde both of them had issues. Andre actually had a tire issue coming down pit road. And 
was not able to get back on the track so that Webster Zygo with an engine issue. And obviously a lot of drivers out of the race due to wrecks. Here are the updated point standings after this race. You see Logan Sanders is still out front, however only one point um, has a one point less lead. Now at this time it is August Eberhard in second. You see Garrett Snores actually pulled his way closer though, now only 24 points back. And you see these drivers in the back here need to make up a lot of points to get back in the hunt. Anyways, that's all for now on the ASC League channel. We'll see you all next time on the Carbon Amateur Series season at Pocono.